Let's see if I can move this up. Yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing. All right. Hey, you guys. I am on time. On time. It's six o'clock. All right. You are now tuned in to WRFU 104.5. All right, I just need to read my disclaimer right now. This is WRFU, and you are tuned in to Conscious Community Connections. All right, this is an open forum for Urbana Champaign and our online community. Views expressed are those of the speakers are not intended to represent WRFU, UC, IMC, or Urbana Socialist Forum. I am running a little bit late, but it's just due to all the holiday things that I'm trying to catch up on. I am trying to hit the road tomorrow in the morning so I can go to see my aunt in South Carolina. You know, everybody's hitting the road or trying to sleep in the next couple of days, you know. I'm going to take a week off so I won't be here next week. You will be tuned in with Tiger. I do believe Kiki will also be here as well. Um, Kiki, if you are coming... Happy traveling to me. All right, hurry up. Even though I can't stand you. But uh, Tiger is now, he's um, in Chicago right now, taking care of some business. But um, I do have William in the building. Um, we're going to do a, a live interview. I am now streaming right now on my account, my Facebook account. And that's Heather Rose or Heather Javon. That's J-E-V-A-N. All right. Um, I am a little bit hot right now. It's hot in this studio. It doesn't make any sense, yes, man. It, it was hot is. last time, man. I don't know. I need to put my earphones on to see if I can hear you. Say hi, mister. Well, hello there. I can't hear you. Not at all? No. Try it again. Hello there. My name is William. William Jordan, that is. All right. Ooh, How about that now? A little bit better? Yeah. All How right. about that? Sounds yeah, good. sounds good. I think I think it's working. I don't know. Now now it's called all squeaking and stuff. That ain't good. It's always something going on, but we still just go live. You know, we still gonna stream. All right. Um, I'm gonna make sure that you guys are able to hear us and um, be able to keep tuning in and liking our our page that we have. Um, all right, Mr. Jordan. That's Thank right. you for showing up, man. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you inviting me out to the show. Yes, but I can't hear you. I mean, I can hear myself just a little. Maybe you should try to raise the mic a little bit or something like that. It's a little bit louder, but still not doing what you want it to do. No. How about now? Well. Unless you want to come on this side. This well, maybe that might we work. Didn't, we didn't have some problems. Let's see how that works. Yeah, we didn't have some problems with this particular mic. It is mic two. I think it's mic two. We've been having some problems with mic two, man. And uh, how about just, that right now? Nah, no, no readings. No whatsoever. No, and uh -huh. I got both okay. both mics on. Well, how about that one? Yeah, that's a lot better. See, all right, all right. Is that mic? That's mic. Two Mike. or one? Or uh, three? Two. That's two? That's my two. Man, okay. All right. So we're going to get it together. We always do. All right. Now, you can say hi. <laughs> well, hello again. My name is William Jordan, president and CEO of Maniac Angel. We are a digital arts and media company here established in Champaign County. All right, all right. How long have you been um, doing the digital media? Well, I've been doing it for quite some time, maybe like four or five years now, but officially uh, a year. All right. I say officially because we just officially acquired the business license and everything, but it's been an ongoing practice. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. All right. I, I was just so happy. Uh, when, I, when I think about something, I get an idea, then I'm like, I know all of these people. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of different resources. And the reason why I, you know, started like talking and trying to conversate and be a little bit more um, open with myself, I just said that I need to bring people together, mesh people together, bring the, com the community together. And like when I thought about it, I'm like, man, I know this guy. I used to work with uh, Will a mm -hmm. long time ago, and he 
told me like he he did a lot of you know tech things and also you know you take pictures i'm like i need some pictures done let me reach out to him and i'm glad that you know you were still you know able to like say all right come on i can do this for you and what's up you know so yeah that's what's up I was, i'm glad you reached out to me you know it was awesome I had a good time doing the job, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you're going to be hitting me up again. Yes, yes, <laughs> most definitely. So um, I, I've i known um, Mr. Jordan for a while now. Um, we used to work together. And then, you know, some years had passed. But the last time I uh, was talking to Mr. Jordan, well, I'm going to stop calling you Mr. Jordan. Will. Will, okay? that's fine. Uh, the last time we were talking, uh, you were going to school and all of this other stuff, and you were shooting videos and stuff. And um, have you since then um, expanded any more of like your knowledge on tech, on video, on um, doing more media type of things? You know how more, you know, in Instagram savvy or I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah, you get more tech savvy when you're dealing with media. I mean, uh, going to school taught me a lot of technical things behind it. At first, I was kind of self taught and you kind of just like, you know, uh, deal with things as they come, make up things or try to make things look good or look cool, YouTube a couple things. Mm -hmm. But when you go to school, it kind of gives you a different take on the things that take behind the scene. What actually does it take to create something or right. compose something? Right, as right. As opposed to just going to shoot a quick video. Okay. Or do a quick photography shoot or even just recording vocals. Right. You know, so it's a lot of tech savvy you have to learn how to you know navigate the operating systems the softwares or whatever your experience is okay okay all right all right so basically in the tech world i should say um you need more experience than anything because you can read the books all day yeah you know but if you don't get out there and actually do it i mean it's kind of worthless right i totally agree um when i was doing computer repair before I did the hands-on work, we did a lot of book work. I mean, I got the work. I yeah. was getting good grades with the work, yeah. with the tests and everything. Right. But I wasn't good with the hands-on. Right, right. So it was definitely different. Uh -huh. But when I started doing hands-on more and more and more, uh -huh. the uh -huh. book work actually made a little bit more sense. A lot right. more sense. You began to understand certain things or why this frequency or what have you is the way it is. Right. Know? Right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm taking off my earrings right now. <laughs> these things big and irritate. Got these headphone, headphones on. So, all right. Usually I have a list of questions. Mm -hmm. And like lately now I, I know which questions to ask. So we did a little intro of who you are, you know, and what you do. Um, and you've been an entrepreneur for more than five years, mm -hmm. right? Yep. But you just now got your actual like business license, and you're like legit now. Yep. How hard? How long? Um, is the entrepreneurship like process of establishing something? You got an idea? Oh my gosh! You know I want to do this. Tell me what made you start. You know doing the tech stuff, and then get into like how long it took and what kept you going in this entrepreneurship like process? Well, I mean, I started really young as a tech. I had uh, people around me that were doing these things like mm -hmm. fixing computers or fixing TVs or even just building certain small circuits like turn on light bulbs. Okay. So I kind of grew up in the atmosphere, but it wasn't until I got older that I realized these are actually skills that people can really mm -hmm. use. You right. know, like, man, right. well, maybe I could use this this way or this way. Maybe I could fix that for this person. Right. You know, but then it also depends on are you willing to market yourself too? Because okay. you can also have the skill, but you got to know how to be a people person as well. Yeah, yeah. As an entrepreneur. Right. And that's what a lot of people don't have. Okay. You know, that's difficult to get the customers or to keep or retain customers, uh -huh. you know, when you're kind of not willing to communicate or yeah. go for it with you know actually producing yourself or introducing yourself or speaking up for yourself right or what right. have you you know a lot of people that i ran to in the past they have skills but they never tell anybody you know okay. they know how to do things they're really good at things but they keep these skills to themselves 
Yeah. So the main thing as an entrepreneur is you have to communicate. You have to be your biggest asset. You right. have to right. promote yourself yeah. more than anything because nobody's going to do it for you. Right. You have to. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Then when people see you doing it yourself, then maybe they'll help you. Right. They're right. not entitled to. Yeah. But maybe they'll help. Okay. You know, you just got to keep believing in yourself. Yeah. Keep going no matter what, no matter what obstacle you face, no matter what comes in your way. You got to keep going, keep driving forward, okay. stay positive. Yeah. You know, most definitely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. With the entrepreneurship, um, I'm starting my company, you mm -hmm. know, I'm starting to get in that, you know, I'm the boss type of role. Um, I got some things under my belt that I need to complete, but in all in all, are you, um, you said you're the CEO, you're the president and stuff like that. And you're just like on paper, pretty much starting your small business type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, did you need any grant money? Was everything like out of your pocket? Um, like your equipment and stuff. I know it's a, a lot even dealing with the tech stuff you gotta have you know um some up-to-date or decent you know camera wear and light bulbs and stuff like that like how did you you know start off what what started you off you bought little at a, at a time and well yeah i accumulated stuff over time mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i just kept adding to the mix i kept buying things mm -hmm. um like i said before i didn't give up i just kept buying things no matter what i just kept Okay, I see something I like. One day I'm going to get that. Right. And then the next day you get that. You okay. know, it's all a process. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all a process. You know, uh, and it takes some time to accumulate the things. You know? Uh huh. I mean, I bought everything out of pocket. You know, mm -hmm. grant money. Um, pretty much no help from anyone. But uh, my lady, you know, she's always in my corner. And, um, it definitely takes a lot of time and a lot of patience. Okay. You know, um, definitely going to take a lot of money, especially when it comes to promotion. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the biggest, the biggest fee out of pocket. I mean, and for my business, there wasn't really many grants for, you know, uh, digital arts and media. More so private lenders, mm -hmm. you know, who APRs are kind of like a little bit too high for me right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just spilled some water. <laughs> now I'm trying to look for something else, but I'm going to wait. It, I can find it. All right. So you got help and you had help from somebody that was basically in your corner. Yep. And she still is in your corner yep. to this day, helping you out with your business. And little at a time, you've been buying just different things. Mm hmm what would you tell someone that want to like start off, you know, taking photography or, you know, producing some type of film or something like that, but they want the results to be like right then and there, like, oh, this is, this has to go right, right now. You know how yeah. people are nowadays. They just want it right now. Like I want my business to start and then I want to make a thousand dollars in two days or By something, the end of the day. you know, yeah, yeah, you know, like, yeah, what, what can you, like, say to somebody or tell somebody, you know? Well, I mean, it never comes easy. It's not an overnight thing. Okay. Um, after a certain amount of time has passed, once you have gained some sense of success within yourself, mm -hmm. because that's what it's all about, it's not about nobody else's success, it's all about, about what you feel your level of success is mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to be successful in somebody else's eyes. Right. You know, so whatever level you feel that's successful to you, even if you are just doing what you love to do, uh -huh. that's a sign of success. You have reached that point. Mm -hmm. But the next thing is to make another goal. You have reached that point to where as you are doing what you all want to do. But what's next? You have to have a goal after that. Right. And that's what a lot of entrepreneurs don't have. They got to have another goal and yeah. another goal and another goal. It's, it's sort of like being a serial entrepreneur. Okay. You know, where you just keep on starting new business after new businesses. Okay. Okay. You know? All right. So um, you started 
you do photography. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me like what all you do? <laughs> well, um, I do photography. Okay. I do electronics. Okay. Um, computer repair. Mm -hmm. um, I've even built radios and tuned radios. Um, T-shirts. Mm -hmm. I mean, logos. I do. I mean, I would like to say I do a almost everything in the digital world. Uh -huh. It would be nice to say that, uh -huh. but I know I don't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, do videos, you know, graphic design, and uh, music. Mm -hmm. Make beats, piano. Yeah. Teaching myself the guitar and audio engineer mix. Mm -hmm. Teaching myself how to master. Okay. That's the gist of it. That's, yeah, yeah, for now, <laughs> just right? For now. Yeah, yeah, just for now. I mean, because as an entrepreneur, you got to have a lot of skills. Yeah, you just yeah. can't solely focus on one thing. Okay. You know, that's why I say it's kind of like being a serial entrepreneur. Okay. You got to have a couple avenues to expand on. Okay. Well, okay. in my field. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, yeah. And then in any field or any company, it's always multiple positions to play anyway. Okay. And as an entrepreneur, you're going to most likely be your own accountant. Yeah, Your yeah. own uh, customer service rep. Yeah, right. A lot of times, you're going to be your own tech. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, So yeah. that's what kind of like made me pick up a lot of skills too because I knew for my type of business, mm -hmm. it would be really cheaper for me if I knew how to do a lot of the stuff. Right. A lot of the high-paying stuff like photography or video mm -hmm. or uh, album cover design. Yeah, Like yeah. these type of things, mm -hmm. they cost a lot of money. Yeah, they do. A lot of time. Yeah, yeah. So knowing how to do certain things, certain skills, it kind of like saves you money as okay. an entrepreneur. And that's going to be the biggest asset, being able to save money. Yeah. You know? I got you. I got you. Yep. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Well, I'm sitting here, my, my wheels are turning in my head, like, oh my God, yeah. I never thought about that, you know? So, oh my goodness. You take pictures. Mm -hmm. You took pictures of uh, me, Tiger, and Kiki a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And they were great, mm -hmm. amazing. Well, you know? You like <laughs> um, yes, I'm going to keep, keep you on deck. That's what's up. I got your card, <laughs> and I'm gonna be calling you some more. You know, um, so you you do logos and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and like in that field, you you can charge. I mean, almost an arm and a leg, you know. Yes. But it's tedious, and it takes a lot of time to you know correct the picture and make it perfect. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. So you're basically, you're charging for like the labor more than anything. Is that mm -hmm. how you say it? I mean, it's different for photographers. I okay. mean, a lot of photographers charge differently. Some people charge by the hour. Some people charge by the actual things you want done to the photography, okay. to the photo itself. Okay. Maybe you want it to be in the park or the forest and you want it to be magical or mystical looking. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a different set of skill as opposed to just taking the photography. Okay. That will actually require software. Okay. You know, so it, it actually depends on what the what the customer wants. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah. Um, I had a run in with someone around town, and uh, I was pretty, you know, you know, peed off with the with the price, let mm -hmm. alone the customer service. And yep. then, you know, at the same time, all in all, it wasn't worth it. Mm -hmm. You know. In the long run, it wasn't worth it. Yeah. It was just too much hassle, too much um, following, chasing that person. And it just made a, you know, like a bad relationship between me and that person. But, you know, understanding what I was getting was not clearly communicated to me. Exactly. You know, so I was very messed up about, you know, giving that person uh, the amount of money. But then also I wasn't able to get the communication or the customer service that I should have and deserved in the first place. Exactly. You know, so mm -hmm. it's like, I, I won't per point anybody in that direction, but it was like, I thought maybe in the Brown community, I can support you because, mm -hmm. you know, that's what you need. But now it's like, I won't even fool with you because it was high price and I know where you got the pictures from. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and you didn't tweet, twerk, you didn't do anything. You know, extra. I could have really did it with my phone. You yeah. know, so it's 
So I really do appreciate it was, I, I wouldn't say last minute, but you did come out, show out, and you know, I got some pictures to prove. And I did tag you on Facebook. Oh, thank God. Yes, I oh, did. I'll have to check that out, man. Yeah, I tagged you on Facebook, um, and I put our picture on there. It was me, Kiki, and Tiger, and I put my picture on there, and I tagged you. So. Okay, I'm about to check, check it out. I ain't yeah. even look at that. Kind of, kind of sleeping on things yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. You got a lot going on. Yeah, I got a lot going on. I know. Got I can a lot tell. Going on. Yes. Yeah. Is it busy for you right now, or what? Yeah, it's it's busy. Uh, musically. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I have a couple artists that I'm working with and okay. producing with and. Got some other things going on, videography, stuff like that, with some ciphers and some other artists from other towns, and mm -hmm. it's kind of like a big deal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you are you ready to quit your job yet? No. Or is that no, a goal? That is that's a, a media goal. Okay. I mean, as an entrepreneur, everyone's goal should become should be to become financially independent. Okay. I mean. That's what we all live for anyway. Yeah, yeah. That's what we all want the next day. Like, mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. that tomorrow. Yeah. That's my million dollar check. Yeah. Open up the mailbox that is. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it don't happen like that though. Right. So, I mean, that's the goal. You know, eventually go out on your own, mm -hmm. quit your job, be your own boss. Right. Hire on more help. Okay. You know, go get that big old brick and water. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So, um, the future goal. I mean, so you're legit on paper. What's your future goal for your company within the next year? Well, within the next year, um, hmm, I plan to produce, I have three projects that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually planning on releasing a song, I believe at the beginning of January. Okay. Um, and I also have a, a, young, a young artist that I'm trying to mold, he's 14. Okay. If I can okay. get him to stop cursing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'd be great. You know? Okay, okay. So those are my, like my immediate things yeah. as far as being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. um, trying to get them guys situated and uh, reach out to people and keep building this database yeah. full of great music. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Um, how long have you been in Champaign-Urbana? Because you are not born and raised in Champaign-Urbana. Is that true? That's true. I'm okay. from Chicago. Yeah. From Chicago. Yeah. And how long have you been in this community? Um, I've been down here maybe like five years, five and a half years now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. What made you come this way? Um, honestly, my little cousin. Mm -hmm. Um, he he was pretty talented. He is pretty talented, should I say? He mm -hmm. was like ten at the time. I seen him rapping, dancing, and singing. Mm -hmm. His favorite artist was Chris Brown. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He had the talent, but he was just young, so I kind of wanted to stay around him a little while. Yeah, you know, because I knew like this would be something he was good at. Right, and it turned out to be pretty good. I'm actually surprised. I can't wait till you guys him. Good. Yeah. Good. So he kind of like, you know, kind of like helped me. Yeah. With the transition, you yeah. know, I had so much going on in Chicago, but. I felt that this was a better move because uh -huh, uh -huh. he's the youth, yeah, you know, yeah. it's more important to, to build relationships with the youth. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. especially the ones in your family. Right. You right. know, mm -hmm. so that was like the tipping point for me, you know, young guy here, blood, smart, maybe I can help lead him in the right direction. Good. Good. Um, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. We we already know the reputation that it has, but um, especially in the brown community, it's just so um, devastating. You to know, say the least. Yeah, yeah, it's devastating. But you know, uh, even five years ago, compared to now, you know, it's still on a on a um, on the radar of you know brown people killing other brown people or harming you know even their own did you get away from that is yeah. that another reason why you like moved from chicago yeah that was pretty much it another mm -hmm. one of the reasons um it's so bad you can't even really stand at the bus stop mm -hmm. without being harassed by some one's child or even someone's man it's just yeah yeah <laughs> it's ridiculous you mm -hmm. know um just a couple weeks ago 
my aunt was in her living room mm -hmm. and was shot, mm -hmm. killed right there in the living room. Sorry to hear that. And didn't do anything to anybody. Sixty years old. Sixty. Yeah. So it's just senseless killing. It's yeah. like it, it affects everybody, mm -hmm. no matter who it is, young, old, even kids are getting killed. So mm -hmm. it's terrible, mm -hmm. you know. In order to not be a statistic, you have to leave. Yeah. You don't want to be there. You know, right. you shouldn't be there. Right, right. It's bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Sorry to hear that. Um, it's, yeah, it's tough. Um, most of that violence right now is trickling down this way. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't had, um, I heard any, like, killings of younger people. We had like shootings, we had different things and beefs going on, but we actually are seeing more of the younger people getting shot, mm -hmm. you know, and actually um, dying and being affected by it. So um, now it's on a higher scale, like what can we possibly do? What should we do? How do we need to reduce these um, problems in Champaign-Urbana, especially when we have a great and phenomenal university, mm -hmm. you know, and we're all educated around here in this town, but we're seeing the violence, you know, um, just on an uproar and increasing, you know. Um, what do you think the community could possibly do um, in the future to, like, unify this or come together or, you know, I these are my basic questions mm -hmm. for everybody on this show. You know, what can we possibly do? Well, I mean, the first thing I believe we should do mm -hmm. is give them something to do. Okay. I mean, there aren't a lot of centers that are free for the kids where okay. they can go and just be kids, whether it's playing basketball or even free music classes or yeah. free whatever. Yeah. There isn't many places. A lot of parents can't really afford to send their kids to certain places where you have to pay to get in. Yeah. So if we have more free activities, mm -hmm. I believe that will minimize a lot because then you would give them something to do. Right. As opposed to doing nothing or finding trouble to get into. Yeah. So yeah. we have to we have to find something. Uh little league games or anything. Yeah. Summer games, basketball tournaments, football tournaments, flag football tournaments, softball, baseball, whatever. Yeah. You know, arts and crafts. Yeah. There are so many things that we can be doing with the youth as opposed to turn the other cheek or not mm -hmm. doing anything yeah you know so i mean i believe that's where it starts okay. finding something to do some type of unity hey what do you like to do communicate see what they like to do what interests them mm -hmm. and then set forth to try to find out find a route to put them in something that interests them right you know right great 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 ideas i like it I'm glad we're talking about this. Um, it is almost 6.30, and I try to make sure that people um, that have tuned in in the last you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes, um, that you are now tuned in to Conscious Community Connections. I am in the studio with uh, William Jordan, and um, I just want to make sure that you guys know and uh, understand that this is an open forum for Urbana Champagne in our online community. Views expressed are those of the speakers are, and are not intended to represent WRFU, UC, IMC, or Urbana Socialist Forum. I want to make sure everybody know and understand that Kiki is, uh, he might be late. I don't know. He might show up. I don't know for sure, but hey, Kiki. Um, I want to also say, hey, Tiger, he is out of town right now on some, like, business. He needs to uh, get some stuff together and squared away. So um, he is in Chicago, just safe travels and coming back. Um, I did let you guys know I will not be on the air next week, but I will have my team or the team still in here, and we will have uh, a couple of guests on the show. All right, back to it. So we are talking about um, unifying the, you know, community and trying to address the uh, violence. Um, and you said more free stuff to uh, offer the kids something to do mm -hmm. and more ideas yeah. to like influence them to do more positive yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, um, I do agree with you. Um, I do remember at some point in time when I was growing up in this community, we had a lot of free things. Yeah. 
and we also had a lot more people that actually cared <laughs> about the youth. <laughs> you know, um, I don't blame a, um, the youth on a lot of different things. Um, I blame uh, just like how society has worked its way inside the communities mm -hmm. and kind of broke people up a little bit mm -hmm. as far as like my dad he didn't want me to suffer you know he didn't want me to you know not have certain things so he gave me enough mm -hmm. you know I had abundance of something you know in the household um, it probably lacked some area but I was able to get shoes clothes in enough you know mm -hmm. um, where now I'm the same way to my kids where I don't want them to suffer and I want to keep giving them whatever they need and mm -hmm. want but at the same time it's like they spoiled <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah. I'm like god dang well, I think about it like I was spoiled they spoiled too mm -hmm. so now I do believe and I agree with a lot of people they are entitled but we did that mm -hmm. you know and it was like passed down or not passed down we just didn't want our kids to suffer yeah. we wanted them to have more or better or whatever else it was but they didn't actually like have to really suffer they didn't have to eat the government cheese and you had to actually like cut it yeah, <laughs> literally you know, it came in a, yeah it came <laughs> in a block you know what i'm saying yeah. that cheese was like ridiculous everybody would say that was the best cheese but i didn't like that cheese you know oh. so those I mean, just time has changed, but at the same time, when I think about it, I'm like, these kids are spoiled, but I didn't want them to suffer, mm -hmm. and I don't want them to suffer, and I want to provide them with things, but that might be hurting them. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, it's possible. Um, I have a cousin mm -hmm. who has the same mentality, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I've heard this before, you mm -hmm. know, and it's not a bad thing to want to give your kids mm -hmm more yeah so yeah. they won't be missing or anything right or trying to put them in a position where they can have other opportunities or options so to speak right that's totally fine it's just you have to teach them values at the same time right right you know right when you neglect you know not teaching them mm -hmm. why is it you feel you should deserve something or you think you deserve something or giving them a reason to deserve something Right, right. It's different. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah, most As opposed definitely. to just when they're always messing up, rewarding them still. Yeah. So it's all about value. Oh, yeah. You know, that's the big thing. And it's okay to spoil your kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Spoil them. Yeah, yeah. Teach them values at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. Those are good traits to have. Yeah. You know? Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I know, sorry, but, you know, I kind of splurged on myself this Christmas, you know? And it was just the kids, you know, they they weren't doing right. You know, yeah. it, it's just like for me to feel good, I'm going to just spend some money on myself rather than the kids. They going to get something. Well, no doubt. To get them but, something. But, but they didn't do right this year. No. Oh, my gosh. They haven't been doing right. You know, Values. but I've been still buying them shoes still you know providing well, some certain, things are necessities but they don't need it oh well see now it's different you know <laughs> i love shoes so i buy sh I, I bought shoes like every three months don't nobody need those shoes no, not really. i don't even really need them but <laughs> i buy them every three months and it's just like i kept buying them i kept doing it kept doing it and then i'm like i'm still yelling you know in the house and telling you to clean up and doing different things and then i'm like it's it's up to me, you know, to keep providing them with these same shoes. But now they'll probably figure it out. Like, y'all not getting these shoes this time because I told you. And now I'm going to stand on my word. Yeah. You know, they're not bad kids. But I'm just using my kids as examples. Kids are just going to be kids. They're going to get them some exactly, stuff regardless. Exactly. Know, that don't make them bad. Yeah, it's exactly. when they turn 18, 19, and they figure it out they bad or not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yes. So yes. they're still young. You know, they're going to make a lot of mistakes and they're going to get them, you know. Yeah, yeah. I've do. been seeing some kids where they 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 don't deserve that stuff. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, I see their attitudes inside the classroom 
It's like you should not be having no shoes on or you shouldn't even have a phone in your pocket. You're not talking you know? about your kids though, right? No, no, I ain't talking about my kids. <laughs> No, not at all, but it's just, you know, certain yeah. things, you mm-hmm. know, and it's like, we need to, we need to re, re, re figure something else out, you know, because mm-hmm. the kids are so entitled and they just get and get and get and get. And mm-hmm. then once they do get out in the real world and they don't get, how are they going to react? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. are they going to be crushed? Are they going to go out and start doing drugs and you know these things right here it's it's real life you know so yep. we we need to think about those things yeah and that's i mean and for the kids they are like our future mm-hmm. like so we have to it, it comes at a certain point in your life when you should no longer think about yourself mm-hmm. you know when mm-hmm. you have other people to worry about uh-huh well mm-hmm. you shouldn't worry about your next meal but worry about their next meal you know, they are our future, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's okay to want to spoil them or give them good things. That means when they get older, they're going to want good things. Right. You know, and that could not necessarily be materialistic things. They could be people in their life, good people. Right. Or uh, good careers or good ed- a good form of education. Yeah. You know, so that don't necessarily mean that they're going to be bad or I hope they won't get crushed, yeah. you know. Because life didn't give them what they want, but I hope that it makes them stronger. Yeah. A little bit tougher. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and then it also started with the household. Yeah. You know, we, we have to still be firm on our kids. Yeah. You know? No doubt. No doubt. All right. I like, like, the more that I interview people, <laughs> the more I, I, I come up with the questions and the more ideas I have and the more things I want to talk about, you know, mm-hmm. on the air. So I'm I'm glad we are here by ourselves right now because most of the time I'm not gonna say um, my team is a distraction, but sometimes I'm not able to get the actual response that I want, mm-hmm. you know. And I reflected on that um, a couple of interviews ago where it was just like I didn't get what I really wanted out mm-hmm. of that, you know, uh, interview. Um, I want to make sure that people can hear the motivation. I want to make sure people understand that we are trying to bring awareness Mm -hmm. to this community, you know, and the reason why we did this talk show is so that we can, you know, bring some positivity and mesh people together, you know, to, to bring some forth ideas, some grand community work place slash center for the kids you know i don't know (laughs) yeah yeah. you know so um this interview is going real good real good i thank you thank you for having me (laughs) you you. know yes um i already asked you we didn't get to the youth all right um with the entrepreneur uh stuff like is it best to start molding the kids right now into the entrepreneurness of this era i should say um yeah start right now um but go ahead yeah i mean this is the, the actually the perfect time mm-hmm. there haven't been this many entrepreneurs in a long time i mean first you just had the big box companies you know the father companies mm-hmm. or so mm-hmm. a perfect example like the music industry. Yeah. It started with the, just three main companies. Right. Now right. it's so easier for everybody to get involved. Mm-hmm. All you need is a beat. Yeah. And the internet. Yeah. And your entrepreneur. Right. Right. And it's just that simple. Mm-hmm. I mean, so with a lot of fields, it's just that simple. I mean, you walk up to the grocery store, you have so many options. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Oh, cereal. Yeah. You like 30, Endless. 40 different types oh, of yeah. cereal. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's always new everything coming out and it's always going to be buyers yeah it's yeah. buying demand the market is always fluctuating yeah. but it's going to always be somebody that needs something okay you know yeah yeah so this is perfect time i mean you start with the youth you start on why the young mm-hmm. you teach them the small values mm-hmm. of the dollar or or just a simple idea of entrepreneurship mm-hmm. you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying yeah as opposed to teaching them to grow up and just to work for someone because you know, that's that's what we were taught when that's we what were young. Taught, yeah. You know, yeah. we were taught to be the employee rather than the am I saying it right? And rather than the employer. Well, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
we we think about it. School started at a certain time, first yeah. shift. That's like first shift. Yeah, yeah. You know, even when you yeah. work a job, it's still first shift. You mm -hmm. get out at three forty-five. That's like you was getting out of school. Yeah, we were molded for this. Right. So I mean, you can always mold the kids to become entrepreneurs as well. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. and that's that's it. Just start teach them small little things. You never know what might pikes the interest. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. And that's, that, that might be the hardest part, trying to figure out what it is that they're into. Right. When they're right. young, but anything can happen. Yeah. You know? Right. It's all about teaching them things. You never know what they might take into. Okay. All right. Um, so since you're in the tech, and then we are talking about, um, you know, the youth and stuff like that, would you, you know, try to push the kids to, to do more of the Instagram stuff? Um, YouTube, um, selling things on the internet. I mean, like these young people got it. They got it good. Yeah, they do. They do. We didn't have none of this when we were growing up. <laughs> they have it so good right now yeah. that you really don't need to be selling drugs. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. The brown community, you really don't need to be selling drugs. You could be selling your Jordan shoes. Yep. Yeah. For the low low, you only wore them one time and paid three fifty. You could probably still get yo three hundred or more. You know, yeah. or more. Yeah. Just because even though they're used, you can still get your money. You yeah. know. So, what what kind of you know advice or you know, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> the internet is a really really big market. Yes. I mean, e commerce. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what it is. Okay. I mean, if you look at it that way, you could sell anything yes. and everything. Yeah. If you was a good drawer, mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. draw something and sell it through Instagram. Yeah. You know, that could be yeah. your per personal gallery. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's so many avenues, okay. especially with dealing with the online. They have websites you can create for free. Yeah. You couldn't do this. 10, 15 years ago. Right. This right. stuff was like thousands of dollars. Now you can go on here and create a website for free mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. put your pictures up. Yeah. Or put your music up. Mm -hmm. You know, and all this stuff is for free. You can sell it. Yeah. And get 100% of your profit. Right. You can do this 10 right. years ago. Yeah. So online e commerce is like the biggest thing. Yeah. The only people that got them beat is Walmart. <laughs> That's it. Mm. I mean, so the online thing is like a really big popular thing. Yeah. I mean, this is the perfect opportunity. The next five, ten years, it's mm -hmm. only going to get bigger and bigger. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be lesser and less people going to the stores. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, oh, I yeah. even shop a lot online now. It's just uh -huh. Uh -huh. half of the equipment that I have at home for my yeah. business I bought online. Right. Then going to no stores. Right. I probably bought like two things in stores out of like. 50 things. Yeah. So the online thing is big and you don't actually yeah. have to have the merchandise yourself. You can be like a third party. Right. And exactly. still make a profit. Still making so money. So you don't even have to have anything. Yes. Just yes. the yes. website. Right. Right. That you can create for free. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's a it's a big thing. Yeah. And you just got to know how to use it. Exactly. You know what you want to do with it. Right. And figure out how to go about getting it. Okay. So do your research, you know, figure some stuff yeah, out. But, yeah. you know, um, I'm, I'm just asking you questions, you know, because I, um, I listen to a lot of Gary V. Mm -hmm. And he's a, um, a white guy and he has um, a Vayner Media or something like that. But he talks a lot about business mm -hmm. and how, you know, you can flip things. You know, mm -hmm. you go to a garage sale, you find something, and you can flip it on the Instagram or eBay or whatever, and you can get your profit, you know, mm -hmm. just off of used items, you know. So when I think about it, you know, and me being a, you know, fresh entrepreneur where I'm ready to do and take up everything. <laughs> take on the world. You know, but I'm like, <laughs> dang, I have to stay focused right now in the beginning, and then I can do that. Yeah. You know, I want to do it all, but I'm like, I got to figure out exactly what I really want to do. Yeah. So that's what I'm, where I'm at right now. I know over the years that it changed, but I know for a fact that, um, 
you know, stores like Burgers, they're closing. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been doing so good for so long, but they're closing because they think or thought that the internet wasn't going to, you know, take over, you know, what they had. If you don't have these sales, like Kohl's, they had Kohl's cash, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> where... Yep. They're giving it away, Wait, yeah. you know. They're sending, the yeah. They're sending you free ten bucks, so you can buy twenty dollars, and they're getting their ten dollars. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter, yeah. you know. And the item is probably worth five dollars yeah. or even less, you know. So it's it's a mind thing that I'm thinking about trying to grasp because I've worked in retail for so long. It's just like I can get my hands in here. And get a little piece of it too, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of people are making money off of the brown community, so I might as well. If I'm in it, I know what y'all want. I might as well get some too, and y'all can bless me, and I can bless you, okay. you know. And yep. it's more love than anything, you know. And I've just, I've been fascinated with the entrepreneur stuff, and like my head's been. Spinning, spinning, spinning. I'm to the point where, yeah, I do want to quit my job, but mm -hmm. I have to get there. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's, it's a process. Yeah. You have to take one step at a time. I mean, as an entrepreneur, it's going to always be, I mean, you're so ahead of yourself mm -hmm. that you actually have to slow yourself down. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I need to start here first. Right. I mean, I want to be there right now. Right. But I know I need. 20 other steps, 20 other items I need to complete before I even get there. Right. You know, and that's always a challenge for the entrepreneur yeah. because they want it right now. Yeah. They know what they're capable of. Right. But it's those 20 steps mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they might be really simple. Right. But all we got to do is just do them. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that will be, that's what we kind of get discouraged at too at the same time mm -hmm. because it's like, oh man, that's too much. Um, I'm not going to even try to do that. Is that how some people fail too, though? That's exactly how. Like, okay. I'm, I'm a firm believer in. I always tell myself this. I mean, I get discouraged sometimes, too. We all do. We all mm -hmm. go through that moment. Right. So I always tell myself this. I can always say it didn't work if I quit. Okay. Simple. Yeah. yeah. It didn't work because right. I quit. Right, right. Like, I mean, yesterday, I wasn't where I was today. Exactly. The week before I wasn't where I was today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I made some type of progress. Yeah. So it's working. Yeah. Just not working as fast as I wanted to. Right. Right. That's why I say, you can always say it didn't, it didn't work if you quit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you just can't give up. You got to keep going. Yeah. Because every day is always something new. Yeah. And maybe, maybe you were a writer and you just was in writer's block. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. But. Mm -hmm. You taught yourself 50 new words right. last week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you're learning something. You're, you're not giving up on yourself. Right. Because in a minute, them skills or what have you, or they're going to come right back. You're going to have many more ideas. They're going to flood. Right. You know? And you have to slow yourself down again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's what, it, that's what it's all about. Knowing when to run real fast mm -hmm. and knowing mm -hmm. when to walk. Okay. Okay. I, I had a question, you know? <laughs> And I lost it, you know, so I think I get back to it. Um, yeah, I'm glad. I am so glad we're in here talking about entrepreneurship because I'm like so new to it. It just brings me um, excitement, you know, like I'm starting something new. Um, I have been successful in other parts of my life as far as like um obtaining my you know bachelor's degree and stuff so i know i can you know do something like this i'm mm -hmm. able to say that i'm a homeowner you know i can do these things because i've already you know completed some of my goals mm -hmm. you know and i'm ready to tackle this one mm -hmm. you know it is grand it's big but you know like you said i have to do one step at a time i'm ready to just be successful but mm -hmm. you know that process is it's it's going to take time and, and it takes patience too and, but you know? you, you're doing what you want to do though right yeah then you should feel yep. successful because yep. you're already doing what you want to do yep i mean you have many more goals set for yourself mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. don't get discouraged you're already successful right you just keep on going five years from now you might have five brick and mortars 
No telling, you know. Just yeah, yeah. No matter what, just keep going. Don't stop okay. for nothing. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I I've had a lot of um, family members on my uh, mom's side. They are pretty much entrepreneurs. Um, and I got a couple of people on my dad uh, side. Um, where when I was growing up, people were like, um, yeah, something about Rose and Taylors. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know who them people is. I don't know what you're talking about. you like, uh, you don't know about Rose and Taylors? I'm like, what? No, I don't know. I'm like, I had to put it together. Yeah, I am a Rose. And who is this person? It was my grandfather. Mm. You know, he cut hair for a living and he was known. But, you know, that Rose and Taylor really means something. You mm. know, he really started something out. And... He was able to complete it and finish it. And, you know, his name is still here, even though he's gone. Brandon. You know? So he sold it to somebody else, but that name is still there. Mm -hmm. It's not going to go anywhere. You know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I need to inherit that. Well, even though I did, you know, it's passed down, but I need to embrace that and be yeah. aware of that in me, mm -hmm. that I can actually do this and complete it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So... <laughs> yeah um i'm trying to think of what i wanted to ask you well we'll just keep going on the entrepreneurship um i know me i've been doing a lot more stuff on instagram mm -hmm. um what all do you do as far as like promotion marketing um i know you are able to do these things because that's what you do and that's what you love um someone like me i'm not too savvy on you know com making a logo for myself but can someone go somewhere and get something for free or um what's the best place to promote your stuff what what with the marketing branding i, mean, I believe the best the best place to promote yourself is with your friends okay. the people that are around you the most okay um they're always going to run into people that needs certain things done, whatever whatever skills you have. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a mechanic, everybody you know pretty much got a car. Right. I mean, the main thing as being an entrepreneur, you can't be afraid to speak up for yourself. Because at the end of the day, no one is going to promote you but you. Right. You know? Right. You have to be able to, I mean, for me, almost every person I meet, I give them a business card. Okay. I'm never afraid to say, yeah, my name is William Jordan, CEO of Maniac Angel. Right. We are, and I'm going to this big old spill about what I do. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And do you like? I always ask, got a follow up question. Okay. Do you like? Or have you had or yeah. have you seen something like this or whatever? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. for my field, is you know everyone is like photography. Everyone has had a photo taken yeah. in their life, right. professionally. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, probably been in a video. Everyone listens to music, right? You know, so right. so for me, it's a a broader market mm -hmm. as far as uh introducing myself or telling people what I do. It's a little bit easier. Yeah. But yeah, for someone else's business, they may have to tailor their search, you know, to the particular people. Okay. Or maybe uh they they shop at a certain place, or maybe they don't go to Borders. Okay. Maybe they go to Barnes and Nobles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about finding that market and knowing how to promote within that market. Okay. I mean, because no market is the same. Right. You know? Right. I mean, so, I mean, I usually promote mainly, I mean, I do a lot of online promotion too. Mm -hmm. But every day I meet new people. Okay. And that's okay. a chance for me to give out my business card. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, no one's going to promote my business better than me right no one can speak up like me right for a business right you know what i'm saying so that's the main thing being able to rely on yourself okay okay no worries all right um so even with i know you have a website mm -hmm. and like with your website you have uh instagram you have facebook mm -hmm. and stuff like that do you um do you post on there daily? What do you, you don't have to do that really, right? Because you said you're in a different kind of um, industry, I should yeah. say. You know, so is yours different than like someone with a t-shirt company? You well, know? I mean, yeah, it's, it's different. I mean, with a t-shirt company, 
you're always trying to uh, get sales. I mean, get, I mean, it well depends. I'm gonna say it depends on if you have a product or a service. I mean, because right. those are two different things. Right. You know, so you, you kind of approach them as far as promotion different. Okay. You know, so for me, I have a product and a service. Okay. So I kind of promote them differently. Okay. You know, uh, product would be my own photography, the things that I go out and create myself. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I might post those up on a specific site for sale. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Or I might use Instagram to show work that I did for people okay. to sell a service. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of different. It depends on what it is that you want to do, what it is you're trying to do with the material that you have. Okay. So for me, I mean, I use kind of two different methods for the product and the service. Okay. Just a small, you know, difference, but yeah. different. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, got another question. Um, I know, and it's referring back to... Um, you're saying that you didn't do any like grant money. You started out and um, basically this is all your money mm -hmm. that you bought um, every single um, light bulb, fixture, camera, lens, you know, computer, mm -hmm. software, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, with that, what type of hoops or like obstacles did you have in order to like get to this point? Was it hard for you to, you know, get to this point? Meaning, like, I mean, yeah, personally, I mean, it or was, it was, it's, it's never a right time to start a business. <laughs> no matter okay. what, uh -huh. it's gonna uh -huh. always be something that try to derail you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you just gotta just keep going. Okay. You know, like one time I had some lights stolen, mm -hmm. my entire light kit, okay. and it was kind of expensive. Well, it's kind of expensive. <laughs> what? $1,000? No, like 500 But that's still okay. expensive. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? lights and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, a lot of people would have just gave up. Like, yeah. oh, man, 500 yeah. And I was at the very beginning. Right. Like, I right. really didn't have $500 to lose like that. Exactly. You know? And I didn't give up. Mm -hmm. A couple mm -hmm. months later, I was able to get new lights yeah. that weren't the exact kinds or they didn't cost as much right but they still did the job yeah you know yeah. so i mean it's never going to be a right time okay. it's going to always be something you just got to know not to give up on yourself because mm -hmm. everybody else will give up on you right you know right so what did you start first did you start taking photography no you said you started fixing computers first right well i started um electronics actually okay. first okay and that kind of like pushed me into music in the digital world mm -hmm. and then um i then i started with computers okay then with the photography and a lot of other stuff kind of fell behind it like the audio engineering and sound engineering okay yeah okay all right cool cool um yes it is almost seven o'clock we are doing good we're doing great on time i do um have william jordan in here um this is the president and ceo of Maniac Angel, right? That's correct. Okay. He does a lot of uh, photography, um, shooting videos, music. Um, he also has a, you said, t-shirt production and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So he has a lot of stuff going on, and we're just talking about entrepreneurship. Um, sometimes I struggle with that word, but um, <laughs> I don't even know how to uh, spell it sometimes. <laughs> I be putting like an E and then a U, and then sometimes it corrects me to... Like, no, nah, it's a U and an E, and I'm like, that's yeah, it just, just don't look much. right sometimes. You know, hey, <laughs> don't nobody use that word all the time. But you are now tuning in to WRFU 104.5, all right? And this is an open forum for Urbana-Champaign in our online community. Views expressed are those of the speakers and are not intended to represent WRFU, UC, IMC, or Urbana Socialist Forum. So Kiki is not here. And Tiger is not here, unfortunately. They are having their little um, time today. And I'm stuck in here doing what <laughs> I do best. All right. And that is talking and communicating. Because um, at some point in time, I didn't do that. A lot of us don't. Man. We still don't. We have trouble with that. Yeah. You know, it's a good thing to communicate. Yes. You, I mean, not yell. 
You know, it's the difference. You know, communicate. Yeah. But you actually have an adult conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. difficult sometimes. Yeah. A lot of people don't know how to handle certain things. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that is amazing. Good. So, with communication, um, I had a tough time communicating my feelings. I had a tough time relaying whatever I was feeling to another person. You know, and I just was... I still do sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I've been getting a lot better though. Yeah, in yeah. in front of people, um, I've been doing a lot of Instagram, um, mm -hmm. like little one minute videos. I've been, you know, going live um, every Saturday, but I'm doing a lot better on what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to be a life coach, but in order to do that, um, I need to be able to communicate with people. And then... I want to, you know, be like a motivational speaker because that goes hand in hand. Yep. But it's just, I listen to a lot of motivational speech, speeches, and it was just more and more stuff that I was consuming that was positive. But then, I mean, I could be in school reading all day. I could be listening to these motivational speeches all day. But if I'm not doing it, then it's like, what is it for? I need the experience. Exactly. You know, I need to get out here and do it. I need to go through it. I need to feel those chemicals change in my body and be able to tell myself like, hey, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all right. You know, get over it. You, I get my little hot sweat and then I'm done, you know, and I didn't <laughs> get over that. And now I can finish my speech, you mm -hmm. know, but um, this, what we're doing in this like area or era right now um i talked to kiki and tiger about just being on the talk show you know and yeah it was my idea and i've been running with it you know we're like booked until march mm -hmm. you know Business so i'm i'm doing what i what i really want to do exactly. you know and i'm taking the initiative to to go that extra mile because this is this is me this mm -hmm. is what i want to do you know, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, and this is a service, you know, and this is going to be part of my business, too. And I've been, you know, just being patient mm -hmm. with what I've been learning, but also with the experience, too. Because I'm not ready to be a life coach yet. Yeah. You know, I need to prime myself, get myself together, you know. And, I mean, I and you're still going through life. Yeah. You know. I am. I am. Still young. Exactly. Because I, I be saying I'm old, and people be like, yeah. Yeah. Still young. I hear that too. You know? <laughs> I hear that too. So, I mean, this right here, um, I just, I want to promote myself the best way. And I just told myself, hey, let's get on the radio and just keep going. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been doing. I ain't looked back yet. We've been on the radio since July. You know? So. Almost a year. Coming up. Yep. Coming up. And I'm trying to do more. You know? Because I got goals. Yeah. You know, and this is going to be part of the business, you know, that I'm going to start. So, awesome. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's it's good. It's all good. I'm just ready to just be like, hey, I did that. I'm ready to do something else. Next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. But, you know, you got to go through it. And, um, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. And learn my lessons, too, yeah, though. That's, that's definitely what you're going to learn so many lessons. Yeah. I mean, I've learned it's almost a lesson almost every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm pretty good with a lot of my softwares, but every day I'm learning something different. Right, right. Maybe it's a shortcut mm -hmm. or a quick way to do something, uh -huh. or maybe it was something that I was doing wrong, or okay. like maybe I didn't do it right mm -hmm. the first time mm -hmm. and didn't notice it. Yeah. Or skip the step. There's always something. Yeah. It's always a learning process every day. Yeah. I mean, I seek to learn something every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's brain food. Yeah. You know, yeah. you want to you want to get smarter. You want your brain to grow. Yeah. You want to become, you know, financially sufficient. Yeah. You know, so you have to put yourself in an environment mentally too. You know, mm -hmm. it's just not mm -hmm. about being at the right place at the right time. Yeah. But you gotta be ready for it mentally. Right. You know. Right. Put yourself there. Yeah. See yourself doing it, and eventually you will be doing it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, because doing something new, it re 
rewires the brain, yeah. right? Yeah, you have to, I mean, like, I have this this little rule that I do. Mm-hmm. I call it the four A's. Mm-hmm. Uh, first, I adopt the new idea, mm-hmm. and then I adapt it. I adapt to it, so okay. to speak. I learn mm-hmm. from, mm-hmm. you know, I pick up certain skills. I get familiar mm-hmm. with it, mm-hmm. and then I become adept to it. I become skilled okay. after okay. dealing with it so long. It's no longer new. It's no longer in the adoption stage where I okay. first picked it up at because right. I've been adapting to it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's a process. Okay. You know, you pick up a skill. Uh, it's new to you. You might want to run away from it. Yeah. You know, yeah. but you, you don't. Right. So you, right. you adopt it. Mm-hmm. You adapt to it. Mm-hmm. You become adept. Okay. You become skilled. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's a process. Good. We got models and stuff coming up out of here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's William Jordan model, right? Get it together, all right? Yes, yeah, great. So, recently, I got to say this, and I've been saying it for the past couple of weeks. Um, I, I went back to get my master's, and, like, I only have a little bit to go, you know? But... I failed twice already with this one class, with this one professor, you know? And I had a couple of people say like, why don't you try it again right now? You know, like just, you know, get back in there and fight and do, I did that. This the second time I did that. I took time off. I took another class, got my GPA back up, cause you don't, you get on probation. <laughs> Graduate school, man, ain't no joke. You get a C and under, like you going on right immediately on probation, mm-hmm. you know. And then you better next time you come back in there, you better jack that thing better back up with some A's and B's, <laughs> you be or you gonna be in trouble again. So that's pretty much what I did. So I failed the first time, got back in there. I took some time off. Got back in there, got my grades back up. Then I'm taking this second time around, which is now gotta gotta be in the other class, and I ain't even looked to see what I got yet. You know, no, not yet. You know, <laughs> not yet. It's just like I said, it right now I failed again, but I learned a lesson because last time I failed, I ain't seen no D on my report card in years these are rough you know especially when you know you can oh do better <laughs> when you know better and i've been doing better mm-hmm. like every other class is a's and b's and now i get a d and i'm 30 some years old mm-hmm. that crushed me so i go back in there again and i'm just like i'm already knowing what's going on because i know who you are and what i'm up against but for for the same response to come back at That's me rough. you know and I just basically was like, hey, you know, I failed. I'm learning my lesson. I'm going to go back in there and tackle it. But right now at this time, I'm starting my company. Because whatever I learned during all of these years of schooling, I got to apply it to something. something. Yep, you do. I can't wait no more. The entrepreneur it's never right is like so bound in me that it's ready to <laughs> blow. I'm like, if I put it off, wait, wait, wait. No, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait another year. No, I would never get it done. You'll never get it done. So that's what I did. And while I was doing homework, I was still trying to make my product, do my product, and push whatever I was doing. But it was like, I got the radio going on. I'm, you know, doing all of these things, but I'm not really applying myself to nothing but school. Mm-hmm. And... The more I listen to my motivational speeches and all of this stuff and who I want to be and become, it's just like suppressed because I'm, I got to turn in the paper, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't want to do that anymore. Yeah. That's not what you want to do. You yeah. know, now I'm like, I don't know if I want to complete it right now. It's going to have to wait, you know? I'm going I'm putting this on the waiting list mm-hmm. cuz I'm on I'm I'm doing something I'm redirecting my energy yeah, and that's what I've been saying. 
Yeah. I'm redirecting my energy to something I really want to do. It's not like it's wasted energy. No. You know, you're doing something that could potentially put you in a position to where yeah. you can only solely focus on school. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's actually, it's a good thing. Yes. You know, it's perfect energy. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yeah. Something positive isn't, isn't negative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the more that I think about it, I'm like, I don't have to study. Mm -hmm. I don't have to write a paper. You know, certain things, it frees my time up and I can actually, like, be there with my kids a little bit more, you know? So I'm going full-time school and work and then come home. I barely want to deal with my kids, you know? <laughs> but, you know, redirecting your energy to something after you fail is the best thing, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm, I'm learning... Just different things because I will have to apply this or have to tell someone or show someone how to redirect their energy once I am that life coach. Mm -hmm. You know, so these life lessons that I'm learning, I know it's going to help me in the it's, long run. I mean, that's you know? the goal, right? Yeah. To learn. Yeah, it is. It is. I just had to, you know, get that out of the way because it was just digging and eating me up that I was... You know, putting in all this money and time mm -hmm. into a master's degree. Definitely. Um, I I want it, you know, personally, but on paper, I, I really don't. You know, mm -hmm. I'm in debt, but, you know, I need to start applying this to something that I can possibly start, you know, uh, paying this debt off and mm -hmm. being, you know, debt free and happy and doing something that I really want to, you know, do. Yeah. Most definitely. Had to get that out off my chest, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be merry and joyful and happy this time of the year, you know. Um, I'm glad we're talking about that. Um, do you do you have kids? Uh, I do. Uh, okay. I have a 19 year old. Oh, we. Yeah. I'm gonna get there one day. Young grown man. <laughs> grown, huh? Yeah. Is he a little will? Would you would you say that? Is he a little wiggy? Yeah, he's a little knucklehead wiggy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I said that to my kids. I said, little Heather, what is going on? I got two of them, though. You know, one's a girl, one's a boy, but it's just little Heather. Mm -hmm. I just have to really think about it like that is me. I know it is. And I put all this energy into them. They're dishing it back out to me that well, they said it was gonna come me. back around to us. Yeah. As that's parents. me. Yep, all day. Yep. <laughs> yes. Bite me in the butt on the on the daily and I have to like think about it like, dang. I I cuss at home. So, you know, I don't cuss on the on the radio, but I cuss <laughs> at home. They don't cuss back at me, but I know they got something to say in their head. Oh yeah, they probably <laughs> said it plenty of times already in their head. <laughs> <laughs> but I I just want to get to, you know, um, being joyful and merry and happy, you know, during this time of the year. Um, you have a lot of people that are pretty much going through a tough time because they're trying to provide this unrealistic day for their kids. Mm -hmm. You know, they buy all these presents for their kids. Um it's just amazing when I think about it that our society um, makes us, you know, makes us take this holiday off. You know, um, even if you don't, you know, celebrate Christmas, it's a part of our culture, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, some people are prone and um, just sucked into this tradition of providing presents for their kids, you know. Because of the tradition, and the, the holiday with Santa, and they put Jesus in it and everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, God dang. But, you know, I'm not going to say too much about the holiday. But um, back in the day, did you celebrate Christmas? Now, do you still celebrate it? You know? Well, I mean, back then it was different because mm -hmm. I wasn't as knowledgeable about what it actually meant to have Christmas. Yeah. Then, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm a little bit more aware of it now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily celebrate it that much. Yeah. Or, yeah. 
but there are kids in the family. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you have to celebrate it for them. Yeah. You know, because it's a big thing in their lives. You yeah, know, they see is. trees, the pretty lights and mm -hmm. all this stuff and yeah. you just can't deny them that. No. You know? Not at all. So not at all. It's a good occasion. Mm -hmm. I mean it mm -hmm. it's not a bad thing to wanna partake in it for your kids. Yeah. You know, they're happy. Right. I mean, that's right. what it's pretty much all about. Mm -hmm. It's a time to, to, to gather with your family yeah. to spend a lot of quality time. Right. I mean, so that's what I think about when I think about Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know, not necessarily what a lot of other people say about it or yeah. where to ride from or whatever. Yeah. But I think about the time that I get to be with my family because there aren't many days out the year where everyone is together. Yeah. And Christmas is a day. Yeah. And Thanksgiving. Right. You know, right. so that's what I think about when I think about the holidays. Okay. Being with family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just sometimes it's, it's kind of sad, but, you know, um, I didn't get, I'm, I'm still able to put up a tree, mm -hmm. you know, put the little lights on it, you mm -hmm. know, in my, in my household and uh, celebrate it, but we don't celebrate it. It's not that big of a deal. Right. You know, um, most of the things that I do in my family, it's almost like a year round type of thing. Like I said, I, I buy shoes every three months, you know? Yeah. So by the time Christmas comes around, you know, um, my kids already know what's going on. Like they they old enough. Already. Yeah, they old enough and they know what's going on, but you know, I'm not, um, I'm not out here ridiculously spending a thousand dollars on one day in order to be broke within that same month and then crying and trying to figure out like where that actual toy is you yeah. know yeah i totally agree and for me as an entrepreneur it's like i can't spend that much money mm -hmm. on something knowing that i still don't have a physical location mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. maybe i'm paying the car note still or yeah. still renting. Yeah. Like yeah. when you spend the money like that, you're supposed to be an owner of something. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Some type of collateral. Yeah. You know. Recently, <laughs> it was people, uh, celebrities paying off Walmart layaways for families. Yeah. Yeah. Um, people were actually taking the stuff back to get the money. I mean, you have been <laughs> blessed to get all this stuff, you know, and you just want to be just that greedy, you it's, know. So, I mean, people are kind of like taking a whole joyous yeah. up out of Christmas with, with yeah. that. It makes you not want to do things like that for people. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is a time for giving. Right. For sure. So. Sure. Someone was kind enough to give you this. Yep. Shouldn't be returning this stuff back. No, you know? not at all. Not <laughs> at all. And I, when I heard the, when I heard of that, I was like, wow. Yeah, you ridiculous. know, I was really shocked that people would do something like that. But, you know, maybe, Maybe they were at their limit and they know they shouldn't have put it on layaway yeah. <laughs> and they already had, you know, $60,000 over here for their kids under the Christmas tree already. <laughs> you know, they shouldn't have did it. But in the business of it all, mm -hmm. I thought about it. I said, Jimmy Johns paid off $80,000 mm -hmm. To, you know, bless people around town at a Walmart, he wrote that off. Yeah, that's definitely a tax break. You know what I'm saying? He wrote that off. That's and that, that was a gift. Yeah, a gift. But then it's also good for him, too. Mm -hmm. You know? So that business thing, that just thinking about that, I was like, wow. Now, if I wasn't thinking about entrepreneurship and doing all this business stuff, I'd be like, that's kind of weird. But, yeah. hey, that's what people do mm -hmm. on a daily. Yep. They give them back and write things off because it helps them. Yep. You know? And if you're a big business like that, that's wonderful. Yeah. You could do that eight times and mm -hmm. then still, you know, 
got a lucrative business and you're opening up another Jimmy John up the street from campus. Yeah. You know? That's right. So, I mean, hey, if if you took that money, hey, hopefully you, <laughs> you went to Jimmy John's and bless him. You know? <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> hopefully you, you got a couple of sandwiches from Jimmy John's. You know? I hope you did. I don't know. But that was pretty funny. But at the same time, it was just like, wow. Um, when you think about that, you like, who could have, who could have did that? You know? Shame on you. But I, I don't want to point the finger, but it's just like, why would you want to do that? Mm -hmm. You probably ain't had no gas. <laughs> probably did. <laughs> you probably needed to pay a bill. Probably did. Stop. Stop. I don't know. With the brown community, we have um, a lot of problems and issues, but um, we need a lot of people to understand that money is a tool, mm -hmm. you know, and it just it's a tool that can help you. And we need to be able to be mindful of what we spend our money on. Most definitely. You know, yep. we're, I can I can splurge and I can, you know, spend enough money on my clothes because I love them. Mm -hmm. I love clothes. I love looking good. I love my shoes. You know, that type of stuff. But my bills are paid. Mm -hmm. I'm not broke. I'm far from it. Mm -hmm. You know? But a person that is working at McDonald's and spending $600, $1,000 on their kids for Christmas one day, mm -hmm. and that child is not going to have that toy in two months, you need to rethink that. That's rough. Yeah. You need to cut that back. A lot. You know, give them 150 or something. It'll work. And then at the same time, they don't really know the value of mm -hmm. these items. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they'll be happy with a dollar store toy. You know? I did that one year. Didn't even know it's the difference. <laughs> when I was working there, I swear I did. My daughter acted <laughs> up, but she kind of got it together. But it was just the fact that, hey, a dollar toy? I bought like 20 items for her and it looked it wonderful. Yep. <laughs> she was happy. That's you all know? they want is gifts. Exactly. It's not about the price of the nope. gift. They just want things. Yep. And that's what we need to remember. They yep. just want things. Mm -hmm. It's us that get wrapped up on the price. Yeah. Oh, this cost. I got to get my baby this. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at mm -hmm. this. Oh, I got to get this. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of times kids don't really care. They just want things. Right. Give me stuff. Yep. That's it. Stuff. Yeah. I I stopped buying toys a long time ago. Uh, the toys never really last. You know, um, I give do like gift cards and stuff like that. But I know your son is older. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but at the same time, you know, just Christmas at my house is totally different. It has been downplayed year after year after year, you know, and it's almost like we celebrate you know just different things during different times of the year mm -hmm. and it's not just on this one day yeah you know but just thinking about it how much money us as americans spend on christmas or before christmas you know All the holidays actually yeah especially the ones yeah. we don't have to work on yeah labor it's day a lot of money they get they got some sale on Labor Day, Always. President's Day. <laughs> yeah. You know, the retail is tough, but mm -hmm. people don't know the game. Because yeah. I, I think that's what it is. It's a game. You know, and you need to be mindful of when to, you know, buy these or purchase these things. You know, mm -hmm. I remember, um, I think it was like an Instagram or some kind of YouTube video, but um, it was some TVs people were trying to get at, and they were real cheap. But they were kind of fighting and pushing and shoving for a TV, you know? And I think the quote under it was like, you probably got that same TV <laughs> that you had last year, that you bought last, last year, year for the for the low low. <laughs> every now year. Now you're getting another. You got to buy another big TV every year. For what? You know, I had a friend who did that. Mm -hmm. They had TVs in every room and they still went and bought two TVs. Because people just got to have stuff. We just got to have. It's never enough. We live in a world where everything is abundant. And that's still not enough. 
I had a um, a class and uh, we had to watch this uh, video and it was about super consumers. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy and wild that back in before the 80s hit, they, um, as the people, the government started to push ads like crazy mm -hmm. on TV, which just was no holes bar, no hands down. The people didn't have no say what was going on TV anymore. You know, so you were just like, hey, yeah, post that ad. That's fine. You know, mm -hmm. we're so, we're super consumers. So we want everything we see. Yeah. Every time something new comes out, a new gadget, we got to have it. A new watch, we got to have it iPhone comes out every year. We got to have it. Every year. Samsung, we got to have it. That's why Sprint got those leases. You got to have it. Perfect. Yep. They're going to make Perfect. sure you get a chance to get it. Oh, yeah. You can get it. <laughs> Anybody yeah. can get it now. Pay it off in 18 months. You can get another one. Upgrade again. Yep. Sign the lease again. No, you ain't even got to sign the lease no more. Yeah, you ain't even signed. Yeah. You already got it. Yep. You and just, just paying them. Just upgrade. You can build go up a little bit more. Yeah, that's all. I did it. I showed sure this. I did it before too. <laughs> a lot of us did it. I got a Note Nine right now. I should have just stayed with the Samsung Eight Plus. See? Yeah, I did it. They got I you. Sure but you're, you're smarter now, so. Oh yeah, I'm most sure definitely. gonna make that same mistake. I again. mean, it just hey, I I love <laughs> certain phones, and my phone I need it though. Yeah. You know, so it's an investment though. I do need it. Yeah. It needs to be fast and. It's my little small computer. You know, I can't walk around with my laptop. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm much smarter with certain things. I just don't throw away my money like I used to, mm -hmm. you know. But most of the people aren't, like, able to have a career, you know, in the brown community. They are actually working at Dollar Tree, mm -hmm. you know, in Gorman's. Yep. And they got two jobs. You know, kids got to go to school, and they can only be at work from what those second shift hours because they ain't getting the fourth first shift you know what i'm saying yep. that's for the managers and everybody else yep. you know so it, they only getting so much and 825 is ridiculous it's rough it's rough all over i mean oh nowadays i mean people are working three four jobs mm -hmm. you know just to live comfortable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all on my minimum wage. Yep. You know, yep. a lot of times they don't get a chance to see their kids. Yeah, most or definitely. Their family. Mm -hmm. I have a friend that worked nine days straight on a third shift. No. Ten hours. Not worth it. Never get a chance to see his family. Yeah. Family has everything they need, mm. but he has to go to work. Mm. He has to work these nine days straight, take this one day off. And work nine more days straight. Oh my goodness! Sorry, whoever you are, Williams friend, I'm sorry. So I mean, it's 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 rough, you know. We trying to live a certain lifestyle, or mm -hmm. we're in this this phase, this age, whereas yeah. we just have to have everything. Yeah. What what well, we gotta have comfortable things. Yeah, yeah. Nice things. Yeah. Shiny things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, myself, point in time, I had to work two two jobs yeah. you know yeah until i decided to take my my skills mm -hmm. the things that i want to do serious mm -hmm. just like you were yeah. saying like yeah maybe i need to take a step back and just yeah do what i know i can do yeah. what i know i'm good at right you know what i'm saying yeah yeah and then once you it seems like once i start thinking about the business mm -hmm. just uh totally different from a different perspective I'm able to understand certain things like, oh my gosh, this is this is good mm -hmm. for me to look at it this way. Where I've worked in retail for so long, now I'm finna start bringing my own out, mm -hmm. you know. And this day and age, it's a perfect time to start a new clothing mm -hmm. line or whatever it may be, you know, just new something because a lot of people are getting away from those big companies because yeah. it's requiring too much. It's too much money to spend on those products mm -hmm. when you got a lot of people making homemade stuff and it's a little bit cheaper you and, can get a lot faster and nowadays i mean when we were growing up 
we were considered uncool when we didn't have certain things. Uh -huh. You know, it was a certain fashion or a certain brand that was out that we just had to have to fit in the in crowd. Mm -hmm. Well, these days, every fashion is an in crowd. Yep. You know, so there is no one particular brand or a certain amount of brands. It's like so many brands out there. I mean, then what is a name brand? Right. It has right. a name yeah. and it's yeah. a brand. Yep. Not necessarily a big name brand. Right. But it has a name and it's a brand. Yep. So I mean, it's a wide array of mm -hmm. of different things or different fields mm -hmm. when it comes to products. Right. So to speak, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Man, I could keep going, but we can't. We ain't got no more time. <laughs> We got to work time. William Jordan, oh my gosh, thank you so much. We are going to get you back on here. Almost definitely. This was a great and amazing interview, you guys. Um, going forth, I know this is the weekend. It's Saturday. Um, please make sure you be joyful, be merry, um, enjoy your holiday. Don't get too um, messed up with uh, the things that are happening around you. Be positive, be motivational, and... Uh, try to sleep in a little bit. All right, I'm out, you guys. Tune in next week. Bye. Oh, yeah. That's what's up. I was going to keep going. I'm like, oh, shoot, it's already 7.30. That was fast. I know. I ain't think we was going to be here that long. Yes, yes. But that's what's up. I yes. appreciate you having me. No problem. Yes, yes, yes. Um, After... We're going to take a picture. I got a, a couple of rough drafts to show you. And the logo. You do? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. Shoot. I, I sure like to rush you because I'm like, I know he got some stuff he doing. I ain't going to rush you at all. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I was talking to Tiger. He like, man, you got to keep him around. You know? You gotta keep him around. He 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 good. I will. That is wonderful. So this is the first one. Mm-hmm. And then swipe to your left. And that's the other one I did. I, I like trying to get Sorry. the color. You say first I, one, one. I like this one. First or second? That one. I know you was gonna like that one. That's the one I like too. I like that one. I like that one. You like this one? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, I do. I really do. Just like that? Oh, you want me to look at it? Look at it, small. Okay, the arrows. Mm -hmm. It's like this. This one at the top needs to be moved. That one is perfect at the bottom. Move where? Where you want to move? That one. It's, it's pretty good. But this one at the top kind of needs oh, to be, so they be oh, so kind of like, like on the a line. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'll do that. So, yeah. That one just needs to be moved and yeah. That one's perfect. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. That, okay. That'll work. Yes, yes, yes. Great. What did you get in here? I get 12. Yes. Thank you so Purple much. Purple gold? Yeah, yeah. Just that'll like work. That. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should have cut the brackets up a little bit so you can see it. Now look at it. That ain't gonna work. Swipe again. Right there, yes. Yeah, I don't know. That it's like like is that purple or is that the edge of it? It it seems it's different. I like it. Now, it's purple. Yep. What I did was, yep. I, like that. I tried to use a gradient. You know, what the, is that? That's like transforming one color to the next. Oh, okay. You see okay. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it didn't kind of blend well. Okay. So what okay. I did was, I made the logo gold mm -hmm. and put a purple light on it. Okay. So okay. that's where the, the color, that little hue comes from around the edges. Yeah. That's yeah. the actual purple light. Uh huh. Channel uh huh. Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I could swap it around if nope. you want the logo to be purple and the light to be gold. 
if you want to do both, but I, I'm you can show me, that's yeah, you can show me the other way, but this one, that is it. That one's it. Yeah, if you want to show me the, um, the purple with the gold light, yeah. Okay. I you know what? That. I'm and, uh, still on live. Like Bye. Bye. Bye.